for those of you who haven't seen it before, to show off some of the maybe features that some of those of you who have seen it haven't actually explored in detail yet. Um, there's, this is, in my opinion, quite an impressive uh, uh, release, and so we have a bunch of new stuff uh, in Maple 2016 that even I, up until recently, wasn't really aware of. Um, so um, this is this is just a brief snapshot of a few things, and actually all of them can fit on this full screen. So I'm going to go out of full screen and just scroll down a bit. Um, so that's that's just a few of the highlights, or, or maybe let's say the main highlights, and I'll just try to go into more details about a few a, a few of those um, features. And just to say in advance, if anyone has uh, questions at any point along the way, I'd be happy to go into more detail about any specific topic um, that anyone's interested in. Um, okay, so we'll just start. Um, workbook is, it's, I mean, this is not a math feature per se, this is kind of um, a new file format in Maple that allows us to organize our files better. Um, so when we, uh, and instead of having uh, work, worksheets, uh, which are all separate files, we can kind of combine a bunch of worksheets and image files and data files all together in, in a single kind of project file or workbook file. Um, it's, it's got the .maple extension and, and that opens up as a worksheet. And basically what it allows you to do is, is combine a bunch of files together um, and you can access them all with hyperlinks between, uh, between the worksheet and the, and the images and so forth. Um, and it's just a, a, an easier way to organize uh, a project, essentially. Um, now, if I open up this, now you, see, you can see there's a new workbook tab that allows you to just kind of browse the files in the workbook, and uh, you can double click and it'll show you the image, um, and so on. Uh, this is, and uh, let's see what else. So you can access your, your various uh, files in there. Um, if I go look right there. It, so code shows up as, as you can actually start editing the code or whatever. Yeah. So, so just scroll through here and, and show you a bit of the things. So you can, uh, let me show an example here. So I can read the data from that. Um, that one attached file, um, and the the actual way you access it is uh, as a string. You would, you would, it's kind of like a URL, but you, you do this, and then colon slash slash, and and, and then your your file um, direct or your file path, and it knows how to access that. And Austin, I do have a question. Though. Yes. So that URL and that. You can set paths, so, you, so that it's pointing to various directories on things, or is it looking after all that for what you see is all you've got kind of thing? I'm not sure I understand. Oh, so one of the things that, for instance, MATLAB has been able to do for ages is set a path so that you can access different projects in different directories. And it's always been, you know, typing path in, in Maple, as far as I know, there's never been a set path option on any of them. We can pursue that later if you want. This is yeah, sure. Like <laughs> but yes. Okay. Uh, I, sorry, I don't know how this is. I expect something that everybody thinks is crazy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so for example, um, that data that we imported, you can plot it. So it's just a way of attaching data files or image files or whatever kind of code files to a project file um, and you have a worksheet that you can use to explore all the other files within that. Um, now it's, that was the program that we saw that, that um, allowed us to use the factorial function. Um, there's also a, a, a variables palette. Which, uh, something's wrong there. But, um, this is how it's supposed to look like, and I think I may not have loaded everything properly. So uh, it's ba 
basically, another thing you can do is you can save when you've done a bunch of work and you um, you have a bunch of variables with values in them. You can save those variable values to the um, to the workbook, so actually it acts as a Maple library as well. So when you open up that workbook, it has those variable values pre-assigned in in your variable space, which is which is great. You don't have to reread in a bunch of stuff or reload a bunch of code. Um, those are already pre-defined for you. So um, if anyone has any more questions about the work workbook, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll continue on. Physical data. This is a new package in Maple um, that is very useful for. I mean, it's it's for a specific um, specific interest of thermophysical data. But it, it's uh, we've done a I think a good job of providing a really powerful package to to explore um, this type of data. Um, so I, I'm not an expert in, in all the science behind this. And, really kind of engineering, but um, um, it, uh, for example, one of the cool things is you can produce these plots called, um, what are they called? PHT charts um, or psychometric charts. This doesn't actually work right now, we've got a link down here. So, for, for example, if I do this, as I move my cursor anywhere on the, on the graph, um, it recalculates all the different values of all these, all these um, so you can see all those numbers in the top left are changing as I move the cursor around. So, I'm certainly not an expert in what all this means physically, <laughs> uh, but I just, it, it's, it's very powerful, it allows, um, uh, people to explore. So this is basically thermophysical. It's it's like working with fluids and temperature and um, pressure and volume stuff like that um, and, and viscosity and all, all the relations between all those properties um, to do. I mean this is kind of engineering so you could design stuff that depends on these properties. Um, so okay. Another big new feature is data frames. Um, <clears throat> so what this is, is basically, um, they're kind of like matrices, except certain columns and rows at the, at the top and the left, or yeah, in the left, uh, have, they're kind of like column headers and column uh, and row headers. And they allow you to, um, it, uh, they're kind of like, they're essentially tables that allow you to access uh, certain properties of the table. Um, so, for example, uh, I don't know, I could just scroll through these, these commands so you can. examples here.
that's not working, so we'll go on to the next one, I guess. Um, we might be more interested in the more dense mm -hmm. combinatorial or summation or uh, well, anyway, I can show, if, even if, it, if it's not live, I can just show some of the commands that you can do. So, mm -hmm. for example, um, you have this, uh, this this data frame here. Um, it's indexed there, and you can get, let's say, the second, uh, the, second the, the value for the second row. You can get the value indexed by strawberry, which is the third row. Um, you can get, you can kind of um, restrict the uh, entries, which are greater than 200. Um, that way, and uh, so we have. It's basically just makes it easier. There's all these the syntax uh, that makes it easier to access and, and compute with uh, various data sources. So that seems to be pretty much like uh, in R. Do you have the integration to uh, say if I save my data frames in R to look at and make it? Daniel, do you know how to answer that? Well, you can always export it, but uh, for our integration, no, there's, there's code generation for our. Okay. You can take Maple code and generate our code from it. Okay. But uh, otherwise, the, the go-between is going to be to, say, dump it up to a CSV. Uh, so here's another example of a data frame um, where you input all the data there and I think these are basically similar examples, so I'm not showing much more. So uh, that's just introducing data frames. I'll, I think I'll go on to the next topic now. Um, I think at this point, I'll, I'll come back to this stuff if we have time, but um, at this point, uh, scroll down here. So physics, <clears throat> we've got a lot of new additions to the physics package, which is a, quite a popular uh, package in Maple. Um, so this is just a, a brief overview of some of the new parts in, in physics. So to start with, uh, we did a, comp uh, and this is all, by the way, uh, responsible for this is uh, Edgardo Chaptrap. Um, so he did a, a basically a, a completion of the database of solutions to the Einstein equations. Um, so if you to see this, I think this will work. Well. Oh, this will help you. Um, so basically, you can access any of the uh, solutions um, and just uh, start working with them. Just scroll through this to show you some of the things you can do. And it's got all the references there. <coughs> Scrolling through, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and then you have this, uh, So this is a way of searching through all the metrics, um, and you can um, choose your whatever metric you want, and then do a search. Yeah. I don't know the physics behind that, so I'm not going to try to choose the right ones myself. But. A 
stuff here. Uh, some extra note notation. Uh, so uh, they've got new operators essentially, the NABLA and, the, and these derivatives here. Uh, work with those. We now have factorization of expressions involving non-commutative non operators. So, and those are uh, so non-commutative variables will be displayed in a different color. Uh, you can work with those. Is the color choosable? I would say yes, but let's see. <laughs> um, that certainly is matters so. for yeah. Yeah. anyone who's colored by the color box. Yeah, I actually don't know the answer to that, but I don't need an answer today. It's okay. PhD advisors, PhD advisors, is colorblind performances. <laughs> uh, we could just try and see if it works. Uh, <laughs> I cheated. Oh, you just picked the wrong color. Teal. I got an error, but the error was in pink. <laughs> 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 If not, I can certainly ask for that. Yeah, you've got a big shot on the list, but you can ask for teal. I like that. That works for me. Um, okay, so next one. So there's some stuff about tensors and general relativity. Um, again, this is all way over my head, so. Um, probably most of us here. Um, so new vectors sub package of, of physics. Um, is that separate from the vector calculus package? Yeah, this is a sub package of physics. And uh, yeah, I guess guns as well. Um, some other new uh, commands here apply products of differential operators, delay evaluation of tensors, and so on. Uh, perform matrix operations. Anyway, a bunch of new stuff in physics. <laughs> I have a meta question. Sure. <laughs> so they, adding new packages is a great thing. And yep. sometimes packages get deprecated. Yes. Like the old and old and package. Yep. It, did any of them ever get actually removed? Um, I, I don't recall if that ever happened oh, personally. Right. Okay. Um, so I think we just basically don't want to do that to our users if, if they're really, I mean, if, they, if, it, if they've got stuff that's based on old package. Um, some of it may not work anymore for some reason in rare cases, but in general, yeah. Um, we, we try not to delete packages. Because sometimes they become useful again. It's, for instance, the, the LaTeX command is, that, is the older version rather than export to LaTeX. Right. And LaTeX, the old LaTeX command is actually more useful than export to LaTeX. Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, we've been trying to improve on export to LaTeX for a while. Oh, um, good. Thank you. Yeah, but I don't know if we've actually made you know, progress. But, like, it's a known issue that we, yeah. we'd like to work on. So, yeah. um, But in general, hopefully the new version, I mean, we only deprecate packages in general if we've got a new version. And hopefully the new version is more useful and better <laughs> um, in most cases. But, um, so, 
uh, Function Advisor. I think this is, I mean, Function Advisor's been around for a while, um, but uh, I think we've just got a new interface and, and, and some improved um, functionality in there. And so you can see it now outputs as a section in Maple. Yeah. Can I ask you to change it from gamma to letter W? Sure. sure. It says. <laughs> um, I don't know why that example occurs to me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And just to let everybody know that we're having another meeting, uh, July 25th to 28th, on the Lambert W function here, and probably in the same room. So if you guys want to, if your buttons for punishment won't come back again, you can do that. That's after I said. So. <laughs> Have you seen this? The the no, I haven't seen what it's been done for so every time we hear so. Let us know if this is correct. Uh. <laughs> 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 it looks overly complicated. Uh, that's, that's quite an impressive definition. <laughs> that is a, well, of course, it's automatically generated. Yeah, it's yeah. doing something from uh, probably the rational differential equation. Oh, well, that's that might be one of uh, the Bernstein Seward uh, integrals. I can't read it from here. My eyes are quite good. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, yeah, there's, there should be a simpler definition, too. Well, yes. It, but yeah, it's true that, that a lot of the stuff that the function buys are doing is automatically generated. So it, um, it doesn't so much store a ton of data as store whatever data it needs to and then does a bunch of calculations to generate all this output. Can we see what it says for branch cuts? Sure. I'll uh, just list the index. Do you have a link to Wikipedia or Math World or something? To tell us about it. Those of us who have no idea what the Lambert W function is. Um, so <laughs> I, I could just briefly describe it's a solution of the equation uh, y equals x to the x for x in terms of y. So it's a y equals x e to the x. X e to the x. Yeah. 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 There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Clearly, you have to come to the conference. Clearly. Very <laughs> <laughs> since you asked the question, I will I'll give you a poster. I'll bring some posters over to the reception. I'll give you one. I wonder if. Oh, yeah, here we go. So here's some identities, which I thought were kind of the, what I was expecting from the definition, but. At Carter's data, the, the differential equation, let's see whether the differential equation is there. There is a, a rational differential equation for Lambert W. Yeah. Got it. There we go. So it may be that the DE you know, has various solutions depending on the integration constant, and that the integral at the top was just the one that picks out the particular solution. Uh, no, that looks like a Seward Bernstein thing. Integral E2 integral of box and stuff. But maybe. Anyway, thank you okay. for building yeah. my. Uh, so. <laughs> cool. So that's uh, some of what the function advisor does. Um, and it, it's, it has, uh, it can do this for any of the special math functions in Maple. Um, So I'll just click on this and uh, see some of the improvements in the series and limit uh, computations in, in Maple 2016. Um, Every function is minus infinity. Oh, okay. I don't know if I want to mention all these talk. So asymptotic extensions, area functions <coughs> in minus infinity series, not asymptotic expansions of hypergeometric functions. Series expansions of ab abs and signum in the real case. Series expansion of gamma at a symbolic pole. Uh, or expansion of complete gamma at respect to the parameter. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and maybe click on some of this. So these are all new results in April first series in, in April 2016. Series of a harmonic function, asymptotic expansions of area, 
and hypergeometric. Did those get carried over for Bruno Salvi's multi-series package? Or? I have no idea. Okay. Sorry. Asymptotic expansion of the zeta, or one of the zeta functions. Um, Two-sided and one-sided expansions of abs and sigma. Expansions of functions uh, with a logarithmic branch cut depending on a real parameter. Limits of oscillating functions was not, uh, or this is an improvement. Uh, we can do more calculations here. That seems to be all for that. Any questions there? Uh, symbolic integration. This is actually something where I'm a bit more confident talking about it because I actually worked on this. Um, so there's a few small examples here. You know, of course, we have a question. Two yes. questions. Okay. So, so one of them is David's favorite example. And there's a couple other examples here where the they were kind of reduced uh, in more simple answers. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So, it, it, is it five over three divided by five minus four? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you have a specific example. Yeah. Yeah. Five over no, three. three. Three over five minus four cos x. It's like related to the um, and it, and plot default the example for the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. Plot the answer, please. Yeah. Huh. Oops. The integrand is is uh, continuous. The integral is discontinuous. That's a perfectly fine answer. Don't let these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, te technically, we don't guarantee continuity. We don't. Yeah, We've had this argument for 20 years. Um, there's one. There's a, one that uh, Wolfram Alpha gets right now that it didn't used to get right, and that's uh, e to the one over x divided by x squared one plus e to the e to the one over x, and go from minus one to one and now it gets a continuous form. So improvements can be made. Yeah. <laughs> Not an improvement in circus tricks. Um, <laughs> I've worked on Alpha, and I'll even admit that. Seriously. Yeah, the, the more difficult thing is for definite integrals. Then you really want to get those discontinuities figured out. Um, Except that the correct way to phrase of uh, the definite integral as, is as a definite integral, so you get all the this is a Okay, well, thank you. Um, where are we here? So, uh, just, uh, there's another link on it. Uh, okay, well, when, you, when you say new, new indefinite integrals, that means uh, that in May 2015, <coughs> wasn't getting them? Or? Yeah, oh, they, weren't, they weren't getting them. Um, in fact, yeah. So I, I wrote a, this is actually a blog post I did on April Primes. This is a, a list of the new um, integrals that are not solved at all in April. So shouldn't that first one have been done by the Risch theory? Uh, uh, yeah, it turns out there, there is some bugs in the implementation or, or weaknesses or whatever. There's certain things that, for example, it would simplify some, some uh, square root and get a C sign or something, and the, the C sign was just considered an unknown function by the Risch algorithm or whatever. Okay. Um, and it wasn't dealt with in the appropriate way. So <laughs> some, some interesting and in, uh, fairly simple improvements once you figure out what, what the problems are. Um, but the problems were not necessarily easy to, to figure out. Yeah. I have a question. Is, uh, in this package, is there any specific uh, like, uh, function can say, I, I, I given a kind of element function, and they say it's not element in the group or not, yes or no? Like, this how I can. I don't want to like. I think I understand your question. You're asking whether we give yeah, like a, 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 a proof. Yeah, yeah. 
No, just uh, answer yes or no, like they said. Whether or not it's elementary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. I don't think we we do that in general. We just provide an answer if we can, okay. um, but we don't provide a, the fact that the answer is not forthcoming could just be a weakness in the implementation or whatever. But, um, but if you type info level int is a high level, then it can give you the steps. It will, yeah. Okay. If, and that can give you the I can, Yeah, especially what I do function, it's nice to see like... It, it'll be hard to tell whether RISH failed because it gave up or unimplemented cases in the algebraic versus whether there really That's was true. no That's true. answer. Even if you crank up the information, you might have trouble. But, but sometimes it tells you the RISH-D has no solutions. So, oh, okay. I, yeah. Okay, uh, maybe not algebraic case. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe not the algebraic case. I'll just show you an example of uh, if you type info level int equals five here, um, mm -hmm. and you do this, it'll, it'll give you some information about the, the process of, of which it arrived at the answer. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, okay. the answer, or? It, for example, if you give a definite integral here, So, yeah, it eventually says, oh, I use the fundamental theorem calculus method. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so, a, sorry, in the second, second example, is there some reason why it's got 1 over secant of x rather than cos x? In general, uh, the integrator just tries to provide an answer that has been integrated. Um, it doesn't really try to simplify the answer at all. Um, and it leaves that up to the user. Because it, it essentially doesn't really want to waste time and wants to return as fast as possible. Uh, and you can always simplify the answer yourself. You can always add a constant for that. So I'll just go through so some new answer was undefined. This is this is an example which was I think oscillating quite a bit. Um, and it's an integral from minus infinity to infinity. Um, it wasn't really clear. I guess you could plot this. So you can see that, um, yeah, it, it's oscillating, and, and it seems like the, uh, the actual size of the amplitude is getting bigger and bigger as you approach a negative infinity for both the real and imaginary parts. So I actually verified all these by hand by that the actual answers are correct. I mean, somehow that I, I proved to myself that they were correct. Um, there were. Uh, a few other examples which I didn't include in that blog post because the previous example was incorrect and we've not, now got an improvement or now have a correct answer. I think that's okay to say for this element. Um, but yeah, so we're constantly making improvements. Um, and, uh, any other questions on that? So symbolic uh, partial differential s equation solving. I'm not sure exactly what's new about this. Maybe it's just the whole thing is new. Boundary conditions? Yeah. Last time I looked at it, you couldn't do that, but I guess you can now. Yeah. Symbolic summation has been improved quite a bit. Um, 
So I'll just go through the, the highlights. Improved handling of definite parametric sums, a new option formal for some, uh, support for Jacobi theta functions, uh, support for piecewise expressions with more than two branches, improved uh, divergence testing for infinite sums, and better support for doubly infinite <coughs> sums. So um, previously in Maple, you would get the generic answer for a, par a parametric sum. Um, and now if you give the op option parametric, uh, it can actually tell you uh, which particular values of the parameter will give you a different answer, um, which is useful. Um, and you can, uh, I guess these are both examples of the same thing. That means feature creep for linear algebra too. Sorry? That's, that means feature creep for linear algebra. Now, you do that for sums, you say, okay, great, I want you to solve this linear system with parameters and give me the case. <laughs> I think we already have that. Do you? Okay, that's even better. Yeah, I think <laughs> there's if you ask for uh, all solutions as an extra a friend. A Jordan's canonical form and their canonical form. It certainly won't do that. Or sure. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, so that's a good thing to request. Um, so I think this is a this is an actual change in behavior. So previously, this would. It, uh, this uh, sum here would give you a formal sum, and now you actually have to <coughs> specify the uh, a region of convergence so it actually converges, otherwise um, it, it won't evaluate the sum. Or you can leave set, yeah, you can set uh, your environment variable m formal to true, and then it will assume that you want the formal sum. So this just gives you a more freedom to, to specify which, uh, which kind of um, mindset you're working on, let's say. <laughs> you're working on. Um, so just go those examples again. So these are all now, because you're not essentially giving it enough information to know what it, want, what it wants, uh, what you want it to do then it just leaves those unevaluated. And if you give that extra information now, it actually does the, the correct thing that you're asking for specifically. Just some examples, uh, geometric polylogs, data type sums. Uh, you can also use the parametric uh, option. Infinite sums in, in expressed in terms of Jacobi theta functions. All coming back pretty fast. Piecewise sums of piecewise functions. Uh, sums diverging to infinity. Uh, doubly infinite sum, so you can actually have your, your index go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Which I don't know, we should have had before, but now we do. And yeah. So, some improvements in statistics. You hear the statistics guy, Dan, do you want to say something about this? Or? So one simple chi-square chi test. Um, I don't know, just give you some output there. Um, I, I know nothing about statistics personally. So. Um, uh, some new visualizations. hypothesis testing, summary and tabulation, uh, and some new visualizations. So for example, scatter plot of um, where 
we sort of got, we have a, a matrix of values um, and we're, kind of, we're coloring the, uh, each point according to its value. This is correlation matrix. Oh, sorry, it's just thinking. There you go. Uh, this is a grid plot, so um, you have four different um, characteristics, sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width, and uh, you can draw <coughs> plots according to the correlations between the, the various um, characteristics. So the grid plot command will do that. Okay. Um, uh, some new stuff in the graph theory pack. Oh, wait. This is basically the same thing I just showed you. Um, this, these pie charts give uh, a measure of the actual correlation. Yeah, it's just more details about that last thing. Um, so for graph theory, uh, various updates, um, including a better display of the actual draw graph command. So, so the help page. I, I guess that a lot of people who, from my experience of teaching, uh, people, there's such well developed statistics packages that are more in a spreadsheet style. Yeah. And so students have a lot of difficulty transiting from something like um, Excel and so forth which do, you know, they, they have really well-developed interfaces to something like Mathematical or Maple doing statistics. So I is there work at sort of reducing that barrier for... I think our data data table, um, the new feature of the data table kind of almost mimics what Excel does. Um, the, I mean, you've got a matrix and you've got your row, the top row and the, and the left column are the kind of headers that allow you to access those entries. So it, 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 I think it's very similar. I mean, that's kind of what we try to do is mimic what Excel is doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Did you have a better answer than that? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult when you talk about progressing from Excel over to one of the computer algebra systems. It's, it's very different worlds, right? Yeah. So I, I think if you're talking to the CAS world, we're talking kind of the mathematical statistics world, where we're actually solving problems that are more symbolic in nature. But there's a huge audience out there for statistics, though. So yeah. And, but also they, they have vast uh, a number of people working on those interfaces out there of statistics also. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is just showing me the draw graph command is now, it looks slightly better. It's got. Um, circles, which are nice to look at for the nodes. Um, there, and uh, 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 nine new commands here, cleat cover, cleat cover number, global clustering coefficient, interval graph is arborescence. Fancy um, I, I don't, you know, I'm not an expert in graph theory, so local clustering coefficient, max, maximum matching, reverse graph, transient 
closer. These are all new to me. Um, just click on one of these and see what it does. And then it, it finds all the prime numbers. So this, these are just examples, uh, some math apps that we've uh, used, and and a lot of these are just to show off the, the interactive ways you can actually the, the kind of features that you can use to build interactive documents. Um, here's another one on RSA encryption. I actually worked on this one, so um, it kind of describes RSA encryption. This is the really the basic, the original RSA. Um, and so generates some uh, some public and private keys and stick in a number there. I think you're supposed to copy this. So that's just a translation into numerical format. It hasn't done the encryption yet. Um, and this is the encryption. Of course, it's a huge number because otherwise it wouldn't be a very good encryption. Um, and then you can encrypt that or decrypt that. Just test that. So we need to paste that into the ciphertext box. And we need to go back here and get N. that here. And then we need to go back and get my D. So the D is the, I believe, the private key. The decryption key. There we go. And decode that. Oh, I'm deeply touched. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, and, and you can actually um, use this to, if, let's say there's a public, uh, on, if you go on Wikipedia, there's an example of this, and you can use their example and actually reproduce it. Instead of the cut and paste, can you not make it put the N, E, and D in there automatically, or? Not yet? <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, I, I think I had a default message in there explaining what the instructions were, what you're supposed to do. So mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I put the, if I if I had them in there automatically, then maybe people would think it, it, those are the only numbers you can use or something. Um, here's another example. Um, This is a cool 3D shape that um, has a special property that um, it essentially has a, I believe, a constant diameter no matter which direction, um, but it's not a sphere. Um, 
and it's actually generated by intersecting a bunch of spheres, and you you, you, you take the intersection, and so you have a bunch of spheres in a, in a, in a tetrahedral position, and you just take their intersection, and you get this nice thing, and uh, I believe we have an animation we're rolling, but. Oh wait, if I add uh, an anti involved. Yeah, you can see that it fits in a square that and that kind of shows the constant diameter property. Um, so you can rotate this from the beginning so that. What what was your question? I was wondering if it did an anti here at all. It's it's been a long day. Um, okay, so that, uh, I guess I'll leave math apps there. Um, there's an explore command that lets you kind of build these interactive um, components uh, pretty quickly. So let's say you have a, a function you want to explore. Um, there you can just use the explore command and it'll produce a graph and you can actually take this slider and adjust the values of the parameter really quickly. And it's, it's just the kind of um, Syntax that allows you to build this thing really quickly. I've been waiting forever for that. There you go. Somebody, <laughs> somebody's <laughs> going to make use of it. Um, so yeah, look up, ex up the explore command. Um, th so this is this is really we've had that for a few releases now, but this this has various improvements to it. Uh, simplified calling sequence, uh, name resolution, text area controllers for evaluating at custom values of the parameter. Controller customization, optional controller placement on top, recording plots. So, for example, and color customization. <laughs> color customization. Color yeah, customization. Sure. Let's see. Color equals. You're gonna have to go to the help page. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What we need to actually put it into the plot command. You're trying to change the. Oh, yeah. uh, the next example has a color uh, option in it. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's in there. There you go. And, yeah, and the, the, plot, the plot command itself, I believe, okay. has a bunch of these new features. So you can, you can put the background in whatever color you want, and uh, you can change the axes, colors, and so forth. Have you approved 3D printer outputs? <laughs> um, I don't know much about your ego to answer your question. It, 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 the previous version of Label did have some output to 3D printer file types. Yes. So there was, but they weren't the most standard file types. They were, there was a very limited yeah. list of file types. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So it was, we had an STL last release, and then before that it was a handful of other 3D formats. So, but STL is you know, the, the really big one. Sure. Okay. So, so we can add more of that. <coughs> Where else have I not covered? Uh, so, that's in, not. With the explore function. Sorry? With that explore function, would it easily let you have multiple sliders and that sort of thing? Because yeah. say I've got a, got a system parameterized mm -hmm. with four parameters, can I mm -hmm. just and I very easily use Explore to actually have sliders for each of those four parameters. I believe, yeah, I believe you can. Um, can you find where that was actually? Where was I just now? for these, so that means that there's only two possibilities. <laughs> um, 
So if I get float letters, there you go, I can actually use this light. Yeah. So if you say three dot dot four, it assumes integers? Yeah. That's something perhaps we can look at, Jamie. Um, I would like to use this syntax everywhere. <laughs> And because it really it's an overloaded dot dot. Uh, yeah. Sorry, can you be more specific about what you're suggesting? Yeah, there there's a there's context in which uh, the range means different things. Right? It's, it's right. Uh, either a range for in sum from one to whatever, and it's the domain is different. Here it, it's context it's it's implicit in real. I think I think uh, uh, for whatever reason, it's this is the um, the implementation for the uh, sliders themselves. Are if you give integer data types for the boundaries, boundary points, then it, it will assume that you only need integers. I, I like that. Okay. But, but it doesn't apply for range. This range is somewhere else. Yes. Um, um, integral for four. x equals three dot dot four. Yeah. What does that? Well, I mean, the context there is pretty clear that you're doing an integral. Yeah, so, so the context dependent. Yeah, I think it's context dependent. There are people who hate that. Yeah. Well, um, I think there's people who hate no matter what you do. But yeah. Okay, so I'll just go into. Yeah, I'm kind of running out of time. Advanced math here quickly. We've got some improvements in conjugate and root of. Some improvements in a vowel, you can do a change of variables using a vowel now in certain special cases. Um, some Grobner bases calculation efficiency improvements. Um, some product of Rudolph simplifications. Oh, nice. We've talked about series and limits. Um, and asymptotic stuff. Is there a package for asymptotics and integrals? Is it improved asymptotics, but if you give a little classes back later, the box is done on that. I don't know the answer to that, okay. sorry. Um, a lot of this has been talked about already. Uh, it's just all that stuff again. Uh, what else? Visualization, some interesting new plot uh, abilities, features in plot, um, so you can give some new colorizations. Uh, there's a value split, so color according to a value and split according to a certain uh, threshold. Um, some statistics visualizations, grid plot, bi plot, screen plot, we talked about those already. Um, we've seen the thermal physical data stuff. Uh, the orientation now have a new has a new default which is supposedly better and um, it's easier to access. Oh, there's a new number theory package that's kind of important. Um, this is, we had a number theory package. This is an improvement on that. Um, got some extra continued fraction calculations, uh, repeated decimal stuff. Um, so it'll actually output, you can convert to a repeated decimal and output with a line over it as you learn in grade school. Um, and uh, that's, I think, don't know exactly what these improvements are, but I'm sure they're useful. Um, <laughs> the old num theory package is still there. Just this one is intended. It, this one, yeah. If you go to the help page, it'll say this has been deprecated, and it'll point you to this one. Um, uh, so basically, a lot of the commands have been improved in their efficiency, um, and there's some documentation improvements. I know I did a command called ith rational previously for the old num theory, and people complained, what is that? And now, actually, we have some some um, uh, documentation that explains the history behind it and so forth. And I forget what, what it's actually called, but um, so do some plots of the, the total, you play this total function, the prime counting function, uh, Mobius function, oh, this is the one, Kal Kalkin Wilf sequence. This was previously called ith rational, um, and it's now got a bit more history behind it there. Um, 
Okay, so oh. that's the new number theory package. What it's else? a real pity Neil Kalka didn't come to the conference. <laughs> I might have liked to see that. There's an iterator package that lets you uh, do uh, exactly implement fast methods for iterating over discrete structures. Ah, very nice. Um, partial differential, oh, we saw that already. Student multivariate calculus improvements. Um, new commands, cross product, diff, dot product, more normalized, triple scalar product. So they've just been improved in, in some new commands there. Um, program analysis, uh, this is, is kind of neat. Uh, some analysis of for loops, um, uh, whether they are we, you can specify a, a specification for for loops, and you can actually have a program test whether the, the specification is met by your implementation. Um, so that's kind of neat. Uh, some logic stuff. This is about SAT solving, I believe. Um, Boolean satisfiability. And truth tables. <coughs> Uh, some code generation, I think this is for the, the programming language Julia. Uh, so we have some translation there. And some parallelism improvements. And just running briefly through these. Uh, some new embedded components. Tables have been improved. Um, programmable tables. There's some improvements there in the bag components and language and programming. And we've got a new user interface as well. 